Hello and welcome to this video on excess calculations. When we carry out reactions, very rarely do we have the exact amount of each that is required. Usually one of the reactants is in excess. This means we have more of it than we need. The other reactant is called the limiting reagent as it limits how much of the product can be made. By using information about the reactants, we can calculate which reactant is in excess and which is the limiting reagent. From there, we can go on to calculate the mass of the expected products. We'll start by looking at this reaction here. We have 8.1 grams of magnesium and we are reacting it with 500 centimetres cubed of 2 molar hydrochloric acid. The first step in excess calculations is to calculate the moles for each of your reactants. So for the magnesium, when we calculate the moles, we are going to do moles equals mass divided by gram formula mass. We have 8.1 grams from the question, the GFM is 24.3 and if you do that calculation you'll get 0 0.33 moles of magnesium. For the HCl, the moles will equal concentration times volume. So your concentration is 2 molar hydrochloric acid, your volume is 500 centimetres cubed, so divide it by 1000 and you will have 1 mole. Of hydrochloric acid present in your reaction. The next step is to look at the mole ratio. So for every mole of Mg that gets used we need two moles of HCl. You can see this from the balanced equation and you're looking at the coefficients in front of the reactants. We are using 0.33 moles of Mg which means that to fully react all of that, we would need 0 0.66 of HCl. Now you need to compare this value to the value that you've calculated as the value that you have present, and you need to have a look. If the number here is smaller than this number, then it means that this reactant is in excess. If the number here is bigger than this number, then this is your limiting reagent. So here we can see that we need 0 0.66 moles of HCl. We actually have one mole of HCl. So this reactant must be in excess. That means that the magnesium is our limiting reagent and will dictate how much magnesium chloride and hydrogen is produced. If we look now at a second example, we're reacting 52 grams of ethane which is C2H2, with 6 grams of hydrogen, which is H2. And you just follow the same steps. So for ethane, moles will equal mass divided by gram formula mass. So we have 52 grams. The GFM of ethane is 26. So you find that we have two moles of ethane present. Do the same for hydrogen. So moles equals mass divided by gram formula mass. We have six grams, gram formula mass of two. So we have three moles of hydrogen present. If we now look at the molar ratio, one mole of ethane requires two moles of H2. We've just calculated that we actually have two moles of ethane, which would mean that we would need four moles of H2. If we compare this to what we've just calculated, we can see that we don't have enough H2, which means that your hydrogen is your limiting reagent and the ethane is in excess. So if you want to pause the video now and have a try at this example here, you're looking to calculate the reactant which is in excess, then using your limiting reagent to work out the mass of copper produced. In this reaction we have 5 grams of zinc, which is solid, and we are reacting that with 120 centimetres cubed of 0 0.5 mole copper sulfate solution. So what we have here is a displacement reaction and we're trying to show which of these two reagents is in excess. 
So if we start by looking at zinc, we need to work out the moles. So we have a mass here, so we're going to do mass divided by gram formula mass. So we have 5 grams of zinc divided by 65.4, which gives us 0 0.076 moles. If we now have a look at copper sulfate, we are going to do concentration times volume. So concentration of 0 0.5 multiplied by our volume, which we're going to divide by 1,000. And that gives us 0 0.06 moles. Now we're going to use the mole ratio. So one mole of zinc requires one mole of copper sulfate. In our reaction, we have 0 0.076 moles of zinc, which means we would need 0 0.076 moles of copper sulfate. We don't have that many moles of copper sulfate, so copper sulfate is our limiting reagent. And our zinc must be the one which is in excess. If we go on to the second part of the question, I ask you to calculate the mass of copper produced. So if we go back to our first part of the calculation, because copper sulphate is the limiting reagent, this is the number of moles that we're going to look at to work out how many moles of copper are produced. So we've got 0 0.06 moles. So here we're going to be looking at the copper sulphate and how it links to the copper. So one mole of copper sulphate will produce one mole of copper. However, in our reaction, we know that we have 0 0.06 moles of copper sulphate available to react with the excess zinc, which means we should expect to produce 0 0.06 moles of copper. We've been asked to calculate the mass of copper. So the mass will equal moles times the gram formula mass. So we've got 0 0.06 multiplied by 63.5 to give us 3.81 grams of copper produced. I hope that you found this video on excess useful. Excess calculations will help you when it comes to other parts of the calculation topic for hire. Remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for updates on new videos. Thank you for watching.